calculation of enthalpy changes. We're going to use this equation here, Q equals mc delta T, to try two different kinds of enthalpy change. So Q stands for heat and it's measured in joules. M is the mass. It's usually the mass of the water if we're doing a calorimetry experiment. C is the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4.18. And T is the change in temperature. So next we're going to try calculating an enthalpy change and here's the apparatus that you could use to measure the enthalpy change for a reaction. This is called an alcohol lamp or a spirit burner. Inside here you have a known mass of methanol and you burn the methanol which then heats the water inside this test tube. Again it's a known volume of water. You have a thermometer and you'd measure the initial and the highest temperature of the water. So here are the results from that experiment. We have the initial mass of the burner and the methanol and the final mass of the burner and the methanol. We have the mass of the water in the test tube, the initial temperature of water in the test tube and the final temperature of water in the test tube. So we'll use Q equals MC delta T. So we substitute in M. Now you have to be careful here. M is the mass of the water. A common mistake is for students to put the mass of the methanol in for M. It's the mass of the water. Next is the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4.18. And then the change in temperature. I've put it like this because I can keep my final answer to three significant figures. And when I do the math, I end up with negative 409.64 joules. Next, I calculate the mass of methanol used. And from the table, you can see it's 80.557 minus 80.034. And that gives us 0 0.523 grams of methanol. I can then go to moles, change to moles. That's number of moles equals mass divided by molar mass. So my mass is 0 0.523 and the molar mass of uh, methanol is 32.05 and that gives me 0 0.0163 moles of methanol. Next I'll divide the heat released which we got in this part of the question here by moles of methanol which I've just calculated here. So the enthalpy change for one mole is negative 409.64 divided by 0 0.0163 and that gives us negative 25,131.28 joules per mole. We should give the answer to three significant figures because the temperature is the lowest number of significant figures and that's three and we should also change to kilojoules per mole so we get negative 25.1 kilojoules per mole. The literature value from the data booklet is negative 726 kilojoules per mole. So you can see that our answer we calculated here is very, very low. And what are the reasons for that? Well, we'll have systematic errors and they are heat lost to the surroundings because the test tube is a very poor insulator and incomplete combustion of methanol. Next, we look at the enthalpy of neutralization. The enthalpy of neutralization is defined as the heat given off when an acid and base react together under standard conditions to produce one mole of water. So here's a common method for doing any experiments with enthalpy. You can use two polystyrene cups and in one cup you have 100 centimeters cubed of one mole per decimeter sodium hydroxide. In the other cup you have 100 centimeters cubed of one mole per decimeter hydrochloric acid. And we also have a thermometer to measure the temperature change. So when we mix these two together, we'll have an exothermic reaction and we should see an increase in temperature. So the example we'll try now is calculate the enthalpy change of neutralization for this reaction here. The temperature of the solution increased by 6.50 degrees C. So we're going to use Q equals MC delta T again. And the volume of the solution, well, you're adding 100 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid to 100 centimeters cubed of NaOH. So the total volume is 200 centimeters cubed. Now, we assume the density of the solution is the same as that of water. Water has a density of 1 gram per centimeter cubed. Therefore, 200 centimeters cubed equals 200 grams. Another assumption that we make is that the specific heat capacity of the solution is the same as that of water, which is 4.18.
So next I'm going to input my values into this equation here. We have 200.0 times 4.18 times 6.50 and that gives us a Q of negative 5434 joules. Next we calculate the moles of limiting reactant. In this example they are both the same number of moles. So we use N equals CV and we end up with 0 0.100 moles of NaOH or HCl. And then we divide the heat given off by the limiting reactant. So here's the calculation for that. And we end up with negative 54,340 joules. And we should give our final answer to three significant figures and in kilojoules per mole. So we end up with negative 54.3 kilojoules per mole. And if we compare to the literature value, which is negative 57.0 kilojoules per mole, there's a little bit of a difference between our value and the literature value. And the reasons for this, well, we could have systematic errors, so that's heat loss to the surroundings. And also, the assumptions that we made about the density and the heat capacity of the solution being the same as water.